Lastly, like the title says, we will look just a little bit about dividing in parts, which also is possible to do. And some examples, if I have 36 plus 27 divided by 9, I can actually divide in parts 36 by 9, and then 27 by 9, and then add. So I can write 36 divided by 9, and or add 27 divided by 9. This here is 4, this here is 3, so it is 7. It works the same way with subtraction. 800 minus 64 divided by 8, I can divide in parts. First, the 800 divided by 8, which would be 100. And then the 64 divided by 8, which is 8. So I get 100 minus 8, 92. I can use this principle with these division problems. I will break this top number in parts in my mind like a sum. I will write it in my mind as a sum. 315 is the same as 300 plus 15. And both of those parts are divisible by 3 very easily. So 300 divided by 3 and 15 divided by 3. So I will get 100 and 5. Very simple form of division. Over here, 4864. I will break this into two parts, not into four parts. But two parts because 4800 is divisible by 8 and 64 is divisible by 8. So 4800 divided by 8 is 600 and then 64 divided by 8 is 8. So the answer is 608. And I've shown you in another video, kind of like a shortcut to think about it is like this. 48 divided by 8 is 6. And then 64 divided by 8 is that 0, 8. Okay, the reason why we can divide in parts has to do with the fact that every division can always be written as a multiplication. This division here is actually 36 plus 27 multiplied by 1 ninth. And if it is a multiplication, then this principle applies. Okay, so it all boils down to the distributive property that works with multiplication, because each division could actually be written as a multiplication. Hope this was helpful.